Look at me! This place is for sale. Paul, this place is for sale. This place is two hours from New York City. It's a long way to commute. Be careful! I like your view of the place better. Uh, it's more romantic. Who do you suppose that is? Maybe it's the owner. Stevie, you come here now. You be careful. I almost caught a rat. Rats. We might as well be back in the city. Oh, I expect the rats are healthier out here. <laughs> Probably. Paul. Why don't you go speak to the man and see if he is the owner? Now, if we buy a house, there will be no trip to Europe. There will be no second car for you. There will be no summer camp for Stevie. Oh, well, this is a summer camp.
we're not farmers. I work for an advertising agency in New York, and uh, she, well, we both have been looking for a place in the country. Well, I was thinking uh, it'd be best for a new owner to just use it for weekends. It doesn't have uh, city conveniences. The missus would probably get to hating it. Uh, I could farm the land for you. No, no, I, uh, I can't afford both places. Well, you know better what you have to do. It's for sale, like the sign says. Still, it's, um, it's a strange place. Well, the water is sweet, isn't it? I mean, it's got a good deep well. Hmm. Oh, the, the, the land's not worn out, is it? No, soil's fine. Yeah. It's better than most. Uh, but it's a different place. The uh, land's really a living thing to you, isn't it? Well, the land breathes like any man. And different as one is from another. Good and bad. Yeah. Fixer-upper. We could swing it, but... Uh... Oh, Paul, I love this house. Please let me try. Please. Can we really swing it, do you think? Yeah. How soon can we move in? I made it myself. That's a pentacle to ward off evil. Oh, it's a kind of nice design. I think I'll leave it there. Well, it's one thing to paint it on. It's another thing to believe in it. as protected from evil as any barn in Bucks County. Something that I, I want to tell you. Uh -huh. you no, know, I saw Garman in the field today. 
and he had killed a chicken, and he was letting it bleed, and then he was swinging it back and forth all over the ground. How do you like that? Thank you. I had an appetite before that. Well, I'm sorry, but I had to tell you, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I told you these people around here are very strange, you know. I'll take the chicken. Killing a chicken and letting it bleed in the field probably means that they're trying to put fertility into the land. No, no. Some of these old ideas, these old beliefs, they die very hard. As hard as the chicken? Oh, come on. They're probably going to have it for dinner anyway. Mmm. <laughs> very enjoyable. I think I made a couple of house payments in the place. Oh. Yeah. We're going to rent the place for a uh, apple bark commercial. I think it's a good idea. Fresh air and clean well water and that whole image. I thought we might have a housewarming after the shoot. You know, with the cast and the crew and uh, well, maybe a couple of guys from the agency. Hmm? Good idea? Mm -hmm. Yeah.
just a dream. Let me hear it. Stevie, it's all right. It's just a dream. It's all right. Okay, come on. That's it. Are you all right? She's sleeping. I get back to bed too. Quiet down, settle down. Apples come in chocolate brown. Mmm, they're wonderful. Apples come in taffy gold. Mmm, they're scrumptious. Listen to me, all you folks. Hear me when I say, Apple Bar, Apple Bar, sends me all the way. Remember to turn out the refrigerator like I have. Yes, and uh, the freezer too. You did? All right, settle down, buddy. We're looking for a strange sound. Look, Paul, I don't know why you're worried about the sound anyway. I mean, that girl can't sing at all. <laughs> We're going to dub another voice in later, but I just want to get a clear track. It's all right. Okay, Phil, let's try this. What are you doing, Dad? Oh. Well, I don't know what it was, but it's gone now. It is? <laughs> that sounds all right. Well, okay, let's go. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Settle down, settle down. Well, let's get position number one. Now, Beth, remember, get up on Wonder. Hmm? Okay. Ready? Apples come with chocolate brown. Mmm, they're wonderful. Apples come with taffy gold. Mmm, scrumptious. This is for you. All you get. You said that girl couldn't sing, but she sure is good looking. I don't know. No, it's a napkin class. What? what kind of class? A napkin class. Yeah, what about that? The teacher that? wanted us to read the great of Mr. Ward off the Nevis, the Pennsylvania countryside. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then I have one for you. And that was the time that uh, Hal Clement caught uh, Blackwater fever. Oh. <laughs> wow. One for you. And my award for today's work. Something about all those things. Not really, but I had this boyfriend who was really nuts about spooks and devils and all of that. <laughs> so he turned me on. <laughs> you turned me on, you Yeah, well, Listen, see you later. See you later. I don't. I mean, the trees are just beautiful. Have you been doing any gardening? 
No, I haven't started that yet. And well, what? I still have so much to do in the house. Oh, yeah. that oh, the house looks lovely. Oh, thank you. It really yeah. does. Nobody we'll around for miles. Our airlifting supplies in. Location manager takes one look at the site. It's just as far as the eye can see is jungle. And he takes a look at it. And he says, you know, when I was a kid, all this used to be apartment houses and hotels. <laughs> <laughs> it was lovely. Well, it's been a lovely party, anyway. Oh, thank you. Oh, magical. Oh, Come on, I'll take you home. Okay. was badly marked, and they had no other explanation than that. If we hadn't given the party, they'd still be alive. Well, you, you, you can't figure things like that, honey. Now, don't you go collecting any free-floating guilt now, you hear? But it's true. Well, yeah, it's true. If you hadn't come out here, he'd still be alive. If he'd gotten a sore throat, he'd stayed in the city. If they'd turned right instead of left at our, our gate and gone through Washington's corner, yeah, they'd still be alive. But you can't figure things like that. I mean, there's no other explanation for it. I just saw Gehrman in the field again. He's killed another chicken. I can't tell you how ugly I find it. Well, I'll have to talk to him. I just won't have it anymore. Now, will you relax? I'll be late tonight, but I'll talk to him first thing in the morning, OK? OK. You know, I heard a baby crying in the barn the other night. And when I went out to see, then it sounded as if it were coming from the house. What did you say to him? He was waving his arms all over. Well, he said something, I said something. He yelled, I yelled. 
firing him. We'll have to get somebody else to work the planes. He said we were fools. And he'd rather not work for fools. Well, how did he justify that? He said we were mocking the devil, especially you. He inferred that we caused that accident. Drinking and foolishness. You think everybody around here thinks that of us? That's it. Now remember, the one that eats the most in ten minutes gets the prize. Easy there. Don't leave your teeth in there. Hey, watch it there, Stevie. What are you doing there? Ain't any more on your plate than you on your mouth. Now look at Pam twirl and look at Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> you have more neighbors than you think you know. Really, come on, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't know. I think you know everybody thinks it's a mess of the home. I'm sure. I think I am. Sure, all you hear is no more than a mile away from you guys. This is how you do it. Here's the A mile down from you is not the first turn. Oh, yeah. Those friends of yours, they were killing them, my brother. Oh, really? Terrible thing. Yes, it was. Mag? Mag? Here are the people whose friends were killed in my brother. Neither the Hankins. Carl and Marjorie Warden. You had a whole You got a lot of conversation coming and going. Would you follow me? I want you to meet her. Harry? Oh, how do you do? I'm Marjorie. Oh, I'm, I'm Ernest Lincoln. But weren't those people killed on your property? Yes. On property. It was on the Schiller property. This is where an excuse me. Watch I got a girl broken down. Harry, this is Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Worden, your ladies' guests and neighbors, Harry. Ah, good, good. I'm Ernest. How do you do? And this is, uh, excuse me, this is Ernest. Harry's nephew. Oh, they do. Oh, Harry. Oh, Harry. out to the hungry ones? Sure thing, sure thing, Harry. Are, uh, are, you, uh, are you retired, sir? Uh, no, my uncle compiles cookbooks. He's a very good... What? They want to know what you do. I put together cookbooks, yeah. I saw an example of your work with the Pentacle. Very skillful handling of the design. Remarkable. Well, where on earth did you see that? They want to know how you know about the Pentacle. I was over at the Schillers, that's how. I didn't know that. They have one uh, tacked up on their new fence. The fence the couple crashed into. Terrible. Terrible. Yes. Yes. I lost. And your manners are all with it to wipe your mouth off. Terrible. <laughs> Only child? No, no, no. Small daughter at home with the city. I put together a Pennsylvania Dutch cookbook once. Amish, Germanic, solid, stick to the ribs kind of food. I illustrated it with pentacles and hexes. I've got a lot of books on the subject. I've studied it a lot. Fascinating. How would you like to see some of those books? Come with me into the library. I'll show you. I spend all my time in here, or in the kitchen, since my wife died. And I hardly ever go to bed. I had a devil in the house once. Oh? They don't believe. You believe in God? Yes. Well, if you believe in God, then you have to believe in the devil. They're inseparable. I got rid of that devil, though. You know how? Well, I talked to him, you see, but when he talked to me, I couldn't hear him. I drove him crazy, and he left. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad to see that you have a sense of humor about this. I wouldn't want Marjorie here to become too seriously involved in it. Why is that? Because he thinks that I am very gullible. Uh, Both feet off the ground. Uh, you know. <laughs> here are some ripe ones. Now, the idea of the circle is for protection. If a circle like these is drawn and you stand inside it, you're protected from the devil and all his buddies, no matter what. But the person in the circle is supposed to pray the Lord's Prayer, almost anything from the Bible. Well, they are very lovely, but I think it's all rather weird. Well, that's the way it goes through life. Thumbing your nose at the world. <laughs>
I'd like to stop by one time and see how you do the pedicles. Oh, yes, well, that would be very nice. Thank you. I'd like that. Thank you. Baby, <laughs> be careful. It's wet. Walk. Walk around. Just walk all the way around the edge. Okay? Oh, you had to do it. <laughs> now, here's what we're going to do. Come on, don't get your knees up. Move on first. Now, this is going to be fun for you. We're going to uh, speak an incantation. You know what? Yeah. Well, it's about magical words. Okay. okay. Now, I'll start out, and then when I point to you, you have to repeat it after me. Okay. Let me find it. Yes. In the name of the powerful, we sanctify this place for our good and lasting life. No, Stevie, no being natural or supernatural shall be allowed to break this barrier, nor bring about our destruction. With this chant, we ask your protection and grace. Ready? Okay. Okay. Now, you just, you, re you repeat after me. You, you ready? Yeah. Okay. I, I am Osiris and Orpheus. Okay. I am Osiris. Uh, no, and Orpheus. And Orpheus. I, I am the judge and the everlasting. I am the judge. No, don't do that. Now. I am the judge and the everlasting. Okay. Because you, you have to be serious or everything falls apart. Are you ready? Okay. Alas, I shall never die. Alas, I shall never die. Great magic cures. Here is one for overpowering a dragon. And one to cure the gout. Here's one for ulcers. <laughs> oh, I'll well, have to tell Paul about that. Ulcers. And here's one to gain a man's love. Oh, here is a splendid one. How to arouse a woman's passion. How a devil takes over innocent people and uses them to do his work. It's like a disguise. Old wine and new bottles. It's fascinating. You know, I thought I heard a baby crying. I thought I heard a baby crying in the barn the other night. In the barn? A baby crying? To check it out? It was a false alarm. Evil spirits do not necessarily bring about mayhem themselves, but possess a human being to cause ruin and shame. The devil is thought to materialize as a black cat or a toad and expect kisses from his subjects. Where have you been? I thought I told you not to wander off. Do you remember Mr. Lincoln, Steve? Hello. Hello, Stevie. Where have you been? In the shed. All kinds of jars of stuff out there. Jars of what? Jars of... Steve, you have to speak up. Speak very clearly and slowly, or Mr. Lincoln will not be able to understand you. Jars of stuff in the shed! Probably the old tool shed. Everything eventually got stored there. Would you do me a favor? Would you go upstairs and see if Lori's all right? Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Here. You're a psychologist. No. <laughs> no. I just know my own son. You know, this is fascinating. I'd like to record your account of the other night, if you'll allow it, when you heard the baby crying. Yes, but why? I like to keep records of odd occurrences like that. You could come over to my house, or I could bring my portable tape recorder over here. I recorded the story of a woman from Trenton who claimed that a devil came through the keyhole of her door, ate 13 white seedless grapes from a bowl in the kitchen, 
promptly kissed her ravishingly, then returned to the kitchen, ate 13 more grapes, and let himself out through the keyhole. And she never saw him again. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to find time all day to call you. Oh, that's all right. I've been talking to Harry Lincoln about magic spells. <laughs> My wife, the witch. Listen, I have to go out to the coast first thing tomorrow. So I'm going to need some new shirts at the very least. We're going to show the new campaign to the client. Yes, well, I'll, I'll get everything ready. No, the kids. No problem. And how are you, Mrs. Wharton? Oh, I'm very well. I'll see you at 721. Bye. You're going to be daddyless for a couple of days. Where's he going? Los Angeles or some other godforsaken place.
want to leave this place. Paul, I want to leave this place. Well, I, uh, I have a vacation coming up in about three weeks. I could use one. Well, go away. I want to leave here now. You've got to be kidding. Do I look like I'm kidding? Not even having a bad time, the kids getting you down? No. No, it's not the children. All so many strange things have happened to me, I can't begin to explain to you. But I feel as if something or someone is trying to possess me. Yeah. Me. Can't you ever be serious? I swear that all you ever think about is trying to sell tomato ketchup. Ketchup. Haven't you been listening to me? I want to leave this place. I say you're kidding. I have sunk every dime I've got into this place. Now, we just got here. I've seen you like this before. Now, you stop it now. We'll go on a vacation. You'll be all right. I won't stay. I'm going to take the children, and I'm going to New York. You can come if you want. It's up to you. You hear me? Fine. We'll sell the place. I'll call a realtor in the morning. I'll go back to the city and live happily ever after. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Beautiful morning. Yes, are you on your way home? Yeah. I asked my nephew Ernest to drop me off here, hoping to catch you on your way to your commuter train. Something on my mind. Well, good. Come on, I'll get you live. Marjorie's had a couple of nasty experiences on the farm. Shockers. Yeah, so I understand. She even wants me to sell the place. I think you should. Why? Do you want to buy it? She's been under terrible stress. Germont called me. He said he heard her screaming last night. He said he'd have looked in on her, but he was afraid she'd order him off the place. He thinks she got you to fire him. I didn't know about the screaming. She's really been shaken up. Maybe close to an emotional breakdown. I'd say at this moment, she feels she's brought something evil into your lives. Evil? <laughs> you know, some places are evil. You can buy them, but you can't always own them. I'd consider a change if I were you. I believe there's a devil. I know it can come disguised to me. Sometimes you have to accept things you've ridiculed in the past. You're incapable of resisting a thing if you don't believe it exists. Don't set up a wall when Marjorie tells you how she's felt or what she's seen. Open up. Listen. As if her life were in danger. <laughs> I know that she's been going through some kind of a transition, but to blame it on the devil is a complete avoidance of reality. I'm not going to see a realtor. I don't intend to, not for a few days anyway, until, until I see whether she's calmed down or not. If I sold the place now, I'd take a terrible loss. And I got a hunch she's been on something. I mean, like, maybe she's out squeezing those grapes out back into some high proof stuff. <laughs> All I'm asking you is that you consider what I'm saying. I'm nearly always at home if you need me. Yeah, and I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm glad you're there to keep her upright. There's my place. Yeah. Stevie! Don't play like that with her. Now take that thing away. Take it away.
juncture of mankind, evil holds the world in his hand. Light has given way to darkness, and evil seeks our very souls. you to stay in the yard. Didn't I tell you to stay in the yard? Didn't I? seen your uncle for a couple of days. Uh, well, my, you've really changed this place. I haven't been here since McDermott got killed. McDermott? Oh, uh, he was the man that lived here before you did. I never thought it was much of an accident myself. I guess uh, if you thought that, you wouldn't have bought the house. Yeah, I was here. Uh, last time was a week before McDermott got killed. He was very shaky. Said he was going to burn the place down. Uh, he said, uh, I've got to destroy it before it destroys me. Well, McDermott was uh, never very stable. Goodbye, sweet baby. Well, I guess I'll be going. Are you going to be all right? Why 
decided you hit the boy. Did you try to burn down the barn? No. Well, did he try to uh, kill one of Griffin's chickens? Did he try to kill anybody? No, Paul. Well, why did you hit him? Hell. And that's why you hit him? Paul, I'm not one to hurt the children. You know that. I've never even spanked them before. You are aware of yes, that. Yes, Marjorie, I know that. But that boy looks like he's... What happened? I realize that he is really hurt. Now, I have apologized to him, and I am trying to apologize to you. I'm sorry. You understand that? I'm sorry. Paul. Paul. You all right? Yes. Have a good day. You too. You see, I don't believe in physically punishing children. I don't think that I ever hit Stevie before. I'm having a hard time believing it was really me. I would be so ashamed if you had to see him today. You don't have to shout to make me hear you. See, when my wife died, I kind of retreated. I didn't feel like talking to people, so I told everyone I was losing my hearing. He even said I was going to see a specialist in New York. I went to New York, all right, but you know what I did? <laughs> I went to a girly show. <laughs> You're so depressed, I can't have you shouting. A 102-year-old woman from Germantown sent me the recipe for those. Supposed to give you a long life and a short temper. I want you to try one of them. No. No, thank you. Uh, I'm not so sure that I want a long life. And I think I already have a short temper. It's strange, you know, but I... I start out to laugh, and I end up crying. You know, um, the books that you gave me, I've been reading them a lot lately. Well, I thought they were going to tear you up like this. I wouldn't have given them to you. No, it's not the books. Can you believe that I believe that the devil is in my house? Yes. If you believe there's a devil, and you believe the devil's in your house, then for you it's true. I don't trust myself. I'm afraid for the children, too. I have to go home. I've left Stevie with the baby. Marjorie! Some things are more powerful than pentacles. Like love. It's a powerful force, Marjorie. I live only a mile away. The telephone puts us in touch in seconds. Don't hesitate. I won't. Apple Bar commercial re recording, take two. Apples come in chocolate brown. Mmm, -hmm. they're wonderful. Apples come in taffy gold. Mmm, -hmm. they're scrumptious. Cut, 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 cut. You got it, Irene? Do it. Honey, 
You're giving out with just a little too much rock sound. Make it sweet. Remember, this is the girl next door uh, with freckles. Freckles. All right. Anytime you're ready, bro. Oh. Oh, can you come home? Oh, honey, I can't possibly come down there tonight. I'm right in the middle of a session. As a matter of fact, I'll probably be staying in town tonight. This thing's gonna go late. Oh, I'm sorry, I really, I didn't mean to bother you. You know, you must think I'm crazy calling you all the time like this. Why don't you call Harry and have him come over and sit with you? Huh? Promise me you'll do that. Yes. Yes, I'll do that. Sin, I'm really sorry that I bothered you. I'll talk to you more. You'll find interesting. I found it when I synced your new track. You see it? There it is. It won't go away. Mm -hmm. You sure it's not just a print? It's on the negative. left for murdered, but he didn't die. He's in terrible shape, though. They're not letting anybody see him now, because, well, there's not much to see anyway. I haven't seen much of him myself since you came here. Perhaps if I had, he wouldn't be like he is. She couldn't have gone anywhere. She doesn't have the car. Why don't how soon you can get me to New Hope and a chocolate? Oh, wow, that'll cost you. And make sure there's a cab waiting for me at the airport.
Stevie, I told you to go to your room. I want to tell you some things. I want to tell Lori, too. But she's not going to be able to understand the way you are. Stevie, I want you to know that I love you and Lori and Daddy very much. Stevie, it's very important that you hear what I have to say. Now, Lori is so small, and she's not going to be able to take care of herself. You are going to have to help, because I can't anymore. Mama can't trust herself to help either of you anymore. Sometimes, I don't know what I'm going to do. from you. When I heard about Harry, I started right over. Now, is he home, your son? He's locked in his room. And the baby?